in the past several months, we've seen a sharp increase in interest rates, and we've also seen an increase in inventory in the Omaha market. If you're selling your home, it's going to be critical that you price your home competitively in order to get your home sold. And that's the subject of today's video, and we're going to get started right now. Hi, my name is David Matney with Nebraska Realty. I'm a local realtor here in Omaha, Nebraska. Now let's jump into today's topic. In this type of changing market, you have sellers that are in two camps, sellers that are selling in the current market, and then you have sellers that are selling in a market that existed six months ago. Six months ago, we had 536 active homes on the market in Douglas and Sarpy County. Now we have over a thousand homes on the market. Currently, we have 1,000 41 homes on the active market in Douglas and Sarpy County. The Omaha real estate market is driven by supply and demand. Supply has increased and demand has decreased because interest rates have increased, causing some buyers to hit the pause button and they've taken themselves out of the real estate market. Now let's talk about seven things that do not affect a home's value. Okay, number one, what you paid for a property has nothing to do with the value. And here's another way of looking at it. Let's say you inherited a property. Therefore, your acquisition cost was zero. You paid nothing for the property. You're still going to sell the home for market value. The second item that has no impact on the value of your home is the assessed value. The assessed value only gives the county assessor a valuation for tax purposes. It is no connection to market value. The third item that has no impact on value is what you need in order to make your next purchase. The fourth item that has no impact on value is what an agent says the home is worth. Some agents are going to tell you anything you want to hear in order to just get the listing. Market value is determined by the market. Number five is the company you select to list your home with. A company does not sell real estate. It's the agent's activities. Agents are independent contractors. Your home is sold based off of their activities. You want to choose your agent based off of their competence, their track record, and their skill at marketing your property. Number six is what you owe on the property has no impact on value. Finally, let's talk about maintenance. For example, a roof. Buyers expect to buy a home with a roof on the property. Now, a new roof may help sell the home faster, but some improvements, like a new roof, are maintenance issues. Replacing that roof that needs to be replaced only means that you brought your home up to selling standard. The very last thing you want to do in a changing market is to overprice the home. You have to be very strategic about your pricing. Now, we just came out of a market that if you underpriced the home, the home would simply just get bid up and sell well above list price. Now, in the current market, you got to be careful because if you underprice the home in the current market, you might be leaving money on the table. Underpriced homes in the current market could also give off a signal to a potential buyer that something is wrong with the property. The same thing goes with for sale by owners. We were in a market that even for sale by owners were getting multiple offers. Now, you're never going to convince a die hard for sale by owner that they will actually net more money with listing with an agent because many for sale by owners don't understand this. And that is we live in a drive through mentality right now where everybody expects an instantaneous response. So if you're a for sale by owner and you're selling it on your own and let's say you have another full-time job and that motivated buyer that has to find a home and close within 30 days, if they don't get an instantaneous response back and they're looking at several homes, then your home is going to be passed by and not even looked at. And that could potentially cost you money in the long run. Now, here's another example of overpricing your home. Many sellers, what they want to do is overprice the home in order to leave room for negotiating. Now, that is dangerous because an overpriced home will only help sell other homes in the neighborhood. When sellers are selling a home, the nice thing is they get to choose their competition. And as a seller, you have to look at the market you're in and where the market is heading. If you overprice a home in a declining market, that's like catching a falling knife. Overpriced homes attract the wrong buyer. If your home is 
really worth $300,000 and you price it at three twenty-five, dollars buyers are going to compare your home to other homes that are priced at $325,000. One of the first things that a buyer asks is, how long has this home been on the market? The longer the time on the market, time on market is not your friend. Days on market work against you if you're a seller. Eventually, overpricing means you have to do a price drop. Now, if you do a price drop, you want the price drop to be significant enough to rekindle interest in the property. A price drop of $1,000 or $2,000 is not going to excite buyers. You want $15,000 or $25,000. So buyers, agents will be excited to go back to their buyer and say, hey, you know that house we looked at yesterday for three twenty-five? dollars Hey, they lowered the price to $300,000. That's going to spur activity. Okay, now let's talk about another strategic pricing strategy, and that is price bracketing. When buyers search online, they search in price brackets. For example, you might have buyer A looking from 200 to 250, and you have buyer B looking from 250 to 300. If you price your home at $250,000, then you're going to pick up both buyer A and buyer B. What you do not want to do is do not price your home at $199,000 or $249,900. You're shutting out a whole segment of the market. Now, in some cases, let's say your home is around $295,000, you might be better off pricing it right on the nose at three hundred. dollars versus pricing it at 295. Now every neighborhood has a serious buyer. The trick is to make that serious buyer pay the most that the market is willing to bear. Now when a home is sold for market value, there's usually two people that are ticked off. The buyer's ticked off because they think they've paid too much and the seller's ticked off because they think they've sold it for too little. That's usually the sign of fair market value. Now this next aspect goes back to days on market. And as a seller, your best offer is usually your first offer. Now, this goes back to where every neighborhood has a serious buyer. When a home first hits the market, there are a pool out there of buyers that are waiting for new inventory. Now, homes are like donuts. Okay, the best donuts are hot and fresh. Not a donut that's been sitting around in the bake break room all day and it's four o'clock in the afternoon. The best homes sell quickly at the right price. Now, if you want to learn more about the home buying process, hey, be sure to check on this next video and you make it a great day.